What's up everyone? Amy Clark Smith, Clark Smith Adventures. I really want to make a video about my old job. I've been sitting here trying to do it for a while. Usually I don't even plan my videos. I just do them. But this video is very hard for me because I hated the job itself. I hated the job itself. I loved all the people that I worked with. So it's hard to say, you know, bad things about it when I loved all the people, but the job itself sucked. It was sucked. It was dangerous. It was dirty. It was exhausting. There would literally be times where I could not even get out of my car when my day was done. I remember I was so tired one time, I fell asleep in the parking lot of my house when I got home. I couldn't even get out of the car. But, so it, it's hard for me. Um, you know, I can talk about other places, but this job I've been at for three years. Animal sheltering is no joke. Would I ever work in another animal shelter. Hell no. I don't want people to take offense to what I'm saying. I loved everybody. I loved everyone. We had so much fun. There was always like laughter and good times, but the job itself sucked. I loved my supervisors, but the job itself sucked. I loved my co-workers, but the job itself sucked ass. A couple reasons why it sucked. One, I understand that people get sick. People have things going on in their life. People take vacations. People, you know, get hurt. But the job did nothing to make our workload less. Our workload less. We had wonderful, wonderful volunteers. People I would literally be like, yeah, those people rock. Those people freaking rock their lives. They're, they're awesome. You know, people that come to help us from the kindness of their heart because they want to make a difference. That was awesome. But at the end of the day, we, we, us employees were still responsible. So the weight and the workload still fell on us. It still fell on us. And when you have less people working with animals that you do not know that are strays, you don't know them. It is dangerous. It is dangerous with less people. Give me a thumbs up if you agree with that. You know, in my 20s, working in an animal shelter is no big deal. In my 30s, no big deal. No, no big deal. But in my 40s, it was hard. It was very hard. Because of the workload, I think. Because of the workload and the amount of stuff that we had to get done, get accomplished on a daily basis was exhausting, tiring. There would be times I would come home and I could not even get out of my car. I would have to call my, who was my fiancé at the time, but my fiancé, now my husband, I would have to call him from the house, which is right there. And be like, oh my God, I can't get out of the car. He would have to help me out of the car. Like literally, I know I'm fat. I mean, we're all, we all know that. But eight hours on your feet to anybody. There was little skinny people that I worked with and it was hard for them. So can you imagine what it was like for me who is huge? Literally, we had like people dropping animals off all the time. 
I have to give it up to the front desk people. They were awesome. They they were like my favorite people in on the face of the earth. I love KDF. I love Ange. I love Gwen. I love JoJo. I loved them all. And I don't know how they did it. Because if I worked the front desk, I would literally throw dog shit at people. I would like cuss people out, throw dog shit, tell them, oh, hell no, you ain't bringing in 40 rabbits. Hell no. Hell no, you ain't bringing in 500 rats. Sorry they had babies. Hell to the no. That's a problem that I had at Loudoun County is that they could never tell anybody no. When I worked at Baltimore County, I worked at Baltimore County for years. I mean, I'm talking like 10 years. They used to tell people no all the time. They're like, well, the taxpayers pay your salary. They didn't care. They were like, hell no. Hell no. You. I even said it to people. I There was a girl that one time came in. She was like, yeah, I've got like all these guinea pigs. I can't keep them. We don't adopt them out. Hell no. Take them away. Bye. Go find somebody else. Put them on go by so you would literally be working trying to get things done and you had a list a mile long you had to clean shit loads of kennels sorry i can't come to work today dog bit my face off sorry so you would be cleaning like kennel after kennel cage after cage you know you had to have the shelter open by a certain time like, you had to, because the public would come in, and they, you know, they want to come in, they want to, you know, do whatever, bug you, torment you, you know? They were like tormentors in a land of torment. And you try to get things done. I mean, I, I live to a certain standard. You should never leave any cage or kennel a mess. And if you do... You do not need to be working with animals because that's how disease spreads. So I'd be working and working and working, trying to get these cages and these animals together. And all of a sudden it would be like, Amy Clark Smith, Amy Clark Smith over the damn radio. Do you know how many times I wanted to throw that radio out the window? Do you know how many times I wanted to be like this to the radio? So my attitude would be bad. I'd be like, oh, yeah, what, what, what do you want? Like, I'm working. I'm busy. We have like 500 rats coming in the front door because this crackhead lady or whatever she was, was breeding rats and keeping them in their walls of her house so we need to get cages for them now now amy clark smith we need to get cages and they all have to be separated so you have to go and get 500 cages because they all have to be separated dude i literally wanted to do this when i would get calls like that Literally, that's that's what, I mean, you know, sometimes you get, like, one cat coming in. One dog. Because nobody in Loudoun County can keep their animal. Like, you know, I want to give up my guinea pig. I want to give my, I don't have time for him. I'm like, what? It's a guinea pig. Like, give him some food and it doesn't take much. Like, it's a great pet to own. You know, like, okay. And people that would adopt, like more than half of them would bring the animal back. More than half. Oh, this dog doesn't get along with my... Why'd you take him? Why? You, like... <sighs> you you people have no idea what I went through. I, I literally have like PTSD working at that place. I would tell people all the time, I'm like, look, you're going to have this animal for like 15 years to try to put it into perspective. Like, I'm, you know, I'd be trying to like put it into perspective. Like, you're going to have this dog, you know, he's only one. 
So get it together. You're going to have him for like 15 years. So is that, is that what you want? Is that what you want? And they'd be like, yeah, that's what I want. I'm going to adopt something to just to say I adopted it because I'm rich and I live in Loudoun County and I'm rich. And so I'm adopting it. And so I adopted it and then I would bring it back a day later because I just couldn't do it. I just couldn't, I couldn't do it. That's the kind of shit I would have to deal with all the time. Also, like, uh, my employees were awesome. My employee, yeah, my coworkers, whatever. The volunteers were awesome. The coworkers were awesome. I had a lot of help. I honestly say I had a lot of help. I had a lot of people, you know, it was hard for me because I was, I'm so used to doing everything by myself and it's hard for me to ask for help. I'm a stubborn person. I'm an Italian, you know, it's hard for me to be like, I need help. I need help. So I had to learn to get help from people. And that was the hardest thing about this job because it was like, boom, 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 nonstop, 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 nonstop. I literally would have to just like hide so I could take my lunch. Like I'd have to leave the premises because if I stayed, they would call you they, because there was always something that needed to be done or animals coming in or someone needs to see a cat. Someone wants a barn cat. They want a feral barn cat and they want, they expect to pet it. Like, I'm like, are you drunk? This cat will tear your face off and you want to pet it. Well, I, I just want to see what he's like. Well, you're a loser because you can't pet barn, feral barn cats. You idiot. <sighs> Dude, I don't know how many times someone asked me if they could pet a barn cat. Like, it's going to live in your barn. Because they didn't euthanize feral cats, which was awesome. Awesome. I loved it. But... You'd have the goofy public coming in and they wanted to pet a feral barn cat. And I'm like, why? It's going to live in your barn. Like it's going to kill mice. It's going to just chill out. Like you don't need to pet it. It doesn't like you. It doesn't want to be your friend. We got like four cats in a trap. Like I wish people would just stop trapping Cats. Stop it. Stop trapping cats. Like, leave them alone. So there was really, like, really good points about the job. And there, you know, but the work itself, the work itself was like, I wanted to shoot myself every day. I wanted to cry. And I could never cry. I could never cry. Because I was so compassion fatigued. I could never cry. I was literally numb. Because I think the problem was, is I had been working in animal sheltering for so long, <clears throat> excuse me, that I, I was numb. I was like void of any emotion, which is scary. When you work with animals, you don't need to be void of emotion. Like they'd be like, oh, you need Clark Smith. Oh, there was a kitten. Who cares? Because when kittens come in, who's going to have to take care of them? Me. Who's who's gonna have to like feed nine thousand dogs? This girl right here. So I was so compassion fatigued, like I just couldn't do it anymore. I couldn't do it. It's by the grace of God that I don't work there because I would have like literally probably have committed suicide. I literally would have overdosed on pills or something. I had to take lorazepam to get through my day, every day working there. It's hard because people are like, why don't you just quit? Why don't you just quit me, Clark Smith? Like, just quit. Um, I have a husband. We have an apartment. Um, we have bills. I couldn't just quit. First of all, my husband wouldn't let me because he, he's a workaholic. Second of all, what would I have done? So this opportunity for me to leave came at the right time.
because I literally was going to like bang my head against a wall. I literally wanted to hang nine inch nails in my eyelids and hang myself by my eyelids from the rafters of the building. So when I talk about this job, it, it's really hard. I mean, I can talk about any other job and it'd be like no big deal because I've had so many, so many jobs. But this job was special to me because I loved all the people and it makes me sad that I had to leave because I consider, you know, people my friends and I loved everybody. It was fun and we used to laugh because you had to. You had to laugh or else you would go insane. But like I said, the job itself was challenging. Very challenging. Very, very challenging. <sighs> if I had to see another rabbit come in the front door, I wanted to shoot myself. I don't know how many people would give up rabbits and guinea Like, it was horrible. And you couldn't just put them in a damn cage. Like, you had to put paper on the floor and put a barrier around the paper so they wouldn't get out and do and, and was like oh my god it's a rabbit first of all i don't think bunnies are good pets to live in a house i know people are going to disagree with me but they poop and pee everywhere and they just like eat and sleep and it's just like okay i'm more of a dog and cat person definitely a dog person somewhat of a cat person we have a cat she's a psycho if she was a person she would be like lizzie borden but i love her i do love her very much so that's it i feel better i feel better i'm not there anymore i have to look for a new job i will never work in animal shelter i'll work in a vet office I would never work with like animal housing. No, has a, you know, uh, like no doggy daycare. Oh, I got a story about that one. Trust me. No animal shelters because it's sad. People think we played with kitties and puppies all damn day. And there were times, but they were few and far between. Most of it is poop. And blood and scumbag people. The residents of Loudoun County, most of them were very nice. It's some very good people. But most of them were entitled, self-centered, egotistical jerks because Loudoun County is the richest county in America. So people would come in with their little snooty, real housewives attitude. And... Expect and I, I would look people right in their face, and be like, no, no, we're no, mm -mm. or people would come in and expect us to watch their brat kids while they like sauntered around the animal shelter. I'm like, um, yeah, your child right there cannot climb that counter. Can you like do something about it? Like, hello, people. So it ended. I have not looked for a job. I will look for a job. This was a hard video to make because I don't want anyone to get offended because I loved everybody I worked with. I was just unhappy working there. I loved the people. I was just unhappy working there. I love supervisors. I was just unhappy working there. So don't get it twisted. I was just unhappy. I was just very unhappy. And now we moved. We moved to Towson, Maryland. I don't know how I feel about this place yet. I lived here 25 years ago. But I was young. And now I'm old. And to live in a place that has nothing but young college student people is, is weird. It's very weird. Because I feel like I can't relate to anybody. Not that I really miss Hagerstown. Because that place sucked. 
and the neighbors sucked and people sucked and it was like the land of the meth addicts but you know I'm here we're here I gotta look for a new job I will never work in an animal shelter ever again I will never do it never so I definitely know I won't do it but it's not like I want easier I just want different I want different I want better Every day I would go to that place and I wanted to like cry. I wanted to kill myself. I literally wanted to shoot myself. I, I literally wanted to jump off the building. And I, I loved everybody. But it's just like it was the job was so stressful. You had to do so much. So much. And you got paid good. It wasn't like you were getting paid like shit. We got paid good. But it was like was the money even really worth it? for all the crap and I like I would look at my supervisor and I, I I loved her I love KDD but I'm like I there's no way I could do your job I would tell her that because I would literally kill myself like she had to deal with so much shit she had to deal with so much like red tape political bull crap <laughs> and I don't know how she did it and big ups to her and hi hi Katie but there's just no way there there's no way I will ever do this kind of work ever again and I'm older now I need I need different I need to have sustainability like I can't keep doing this kind of work I'm 44 even though I could still work circles around people I'm 44 and I'm old and my back would hurt my legs would hurt my ankles would hurt my feet would hurt my arms would hurt and there's no way I could continue to do this kind of work. Like, I couldn't imagine doing this when I'm 60. I couldn't imagine doing this even five years from now. So it was like perfect timing. And even though it's like I have to get used to living here, oh, it just feels good not to have to go to that job every day. I would literally get physically ill driving to work every day. I had to take lorazepam. I had to take antidepressants. I would literally, like, before I would have to go to work, like, I, I would be coming up to the job because it took forever. It took forever to get to work every damn day. Even though I took the back ways. Because people were stupid in Virginia driving. They drove like crazy people. And, you, and not even the people driving because there was really good drivers. But the lights... Any of y'all that live in Northern Virginia can understand what I'm talking about. The stoplights take forever to change from red to green. And then they let like three cars through. And then you sit for like an hour. And then they change and they let three cars. Through. So it would take me forever to get to work. Ever, 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 ever. And it was miserable. And then the whole time I'm sitting and waiting to get through the damn light, I would think about like all the crap I had to do and all the stress and this person ain't showing up for work and this person is sick and this per and it would like make me physically ill. It would make me physically ill and I'm, st I'm getting like anxious right now even talking about it. Like I would have to take a lorazepam to function and sometimes I would take two. I would take two damn lorazepams to function. And then we had like work drama with Skeeter and Farah. Those are two people that I have to make a video about. They're interesting, let me tell you. I'll make a video about them some other time. And we had that whole work drama with them too. And oh, it was just, I'm just glad it's over. And, you know, I'm blessed because now I'm, like, literally sitting here doing nothing, watching Game of Thrones. A great show. But, and I miss working and I miss interacting around people, but I don't miss that job itself. I, I don't miss it, you know. I appreciated it. I thanked I was thankful I had it and I appreciated it, but I don't miss it. 
because I literally was going insane. I would say that every day. I would say, I'm, I'm going insane. This place makes me want to go insane. <sighs> I have to take a breath after talking about that because I still have nightmares. I would have nightmares about that place. Just, it was like a factory. It was like a factory that just never ended. And you're, and it got faster and faster and faster. Like the I Love Lucy episode where she was just like mm, mm, stuffing chocolates in her mouth because she just couldn't keep up. And it was like, that's how you felt. You couldn't breathe. You couldn't keep up. You know, you never knew. It was like that whole never knowing what was coming in the front door. And you could say no to nobody. You could say no to nobody. And it was like, you didn't know if you were going to have a good day or a shitty day or a day where you didn't get lunch. I would have to like van, I would have to literally hide in the bathroom. Like, where's Amy Clark Smith? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would hear them in the bathroom walking by like, where's Amy Clark Smith? <laughs> and I'd be like, <sighs> and I got fatter working there, even though I worked like a slave like a dog. I worked like a dog. And it was, there was no reason why I should have been this fat. I think it was because of the stress. It made me eat. My lunch period was my time. You had to beg because there was so much to do all the time. So you had to like skip out for lunch. Like you couldn't just be like, I'm going to take my lunch at this time. No. You took your lunch when you had the chance. So I would take my lunch and go and hide somewhere for a good half an hour and go to Chick-fil-A, go to Mod Pizza, go to Starbucks and get big venti frappuccinos because I couldn't function because that job made you want to like shoot yourself. So that was it. That's it. I feel better. I feel a lot better talking about it. It was a rough experience. Would I do it again? Yes. Because it provided me with good income. And I learned what I did not want from this job. I learned. It was a learning experience. It was a learning experience. And I appreciate that learning experience. I feel like I had been through a battle. I would literally get off work and feel like I got run over by a truck. Because I was so sore and exhausted and emotionally drained. Mentally drained. Physically. Just... I was just physically like... And then when they would like put animals to sleep, which they didn't do often, that's one really good pl good thing about this place is that they gave every animal they could a chance. You know, they would only euthanize for like really sick, sick, injured animals that didn't, you know, have a chance to live. Or extremely aggressive, like nobody, like an animal behavioralist couldn't deal with. Like veterinary animal behavioralist, someone who had degrees, like masters, and, you know, PhDs in animal medical behavior couldn't, couldn't help. That's who they would euthanize. And I appreciate that place for that because I came from another shelter that would euthanize anything. They would euthanize anything for space because there was so much coming in all the time. So I do appreciate that. But at the same time, it put a lot of stress on us because we were always... and. Pe People that I work with, that I used to work with, will disagree. But I know for a fact, we were always short-staffed. Always. No matter what. Even if we were fully staffed, we were short-staffed. <laughs> All I wanted was a Boston Terrier. And none ever came in. And the only one that came in was like one time in three years. And it had an owner. 
So that was it. I had to clean like literally 50,000 dogs in like two hours. And just, uh, it was just, uh, ugh. A learning experience. Definitely a learning experience. I want more for myself. I want more money, even though this place paid really good. I want more money. I want more freedom. I want more freedom in what I'm doing in a career. Like you always, I always felt trapped there. Like, gotta go to work. Can't go to lunch because this person's at lunch. Can't take off because this person's sick or this person is hurt or this. It was just, it was too much sometimes. It was just too much. Gotta work every holiday. Gotta work every effing Christmas. Gotta work every effing Easter. Got I refuse to work Easter. I would work Christmas before I were I would work Easter. Because at that place, Christmas you were off. I mean, Christmas, sorry. Christmas, let me explain this. At Christmas time, you work Christmas, but we were closed to the public. So all you did was have to come in and work and you go home and you're, you're by yourself. So who cares, right? Easter, they didn't, Loudoun County did not look at Easter as a holiday. So you were scheduled to work. Let me tell you something. I ain't working no damn Easter. Jesus died that day. Okay? I'm a Christian. I ain't working no damn Easter, okay? And we were open to the public. You know, every lunatic would come in that day. Easter was horrible. They'll, they'll say, no, it wasn't bad. No, Easter sucked ass, okay? Working Easter wanted to make you literally shoot yourself or whatever. It literally wanted to make you, like, just... So I worked one Easter in those three years, and the other times I, I was uh uh no, I ain't working Easter no, I'll work Christmas, I'll work New Year's, I'll work whatever hall Thanksgiving, I didn't care, I ain't working no damn Easter uh uh. Well, I think I've rambled on enough. Thank you for listening to me. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like it, it is your American freedom to give me a thumbs down. Who cares? I don't care. Whatever. Give me a thumbs down. I don't care. <laughs> give me 5,000 thumbs downs. Like, who cares? Whatever. Or give me a thumbs up. Or subscribe. Or don't. I just wanted to get that out. It had been building up inside of me for a while. You know, I don't have any animosity towards that job I loved all the people oh my god I loved everybody they didn't give some of the employees enough credit you know those people that I worked with and the volunteers went far above and beyond for that place and it was just a lot it's a lot dealing with Loudoun County residents. It was a lot dealing with non-Loudoun County residents. It was a lot. It was a lot. And you have to be tough if you want to work in an animal shelter. You can't be a sissy. You can't be a, a crybaby. You have to be tough. You have to be tough. And you have to have thin, like, thick skin. Like, yeah. Is that it? I don't know. <laughs> you have to have thick skin. You have to let things just... <sighs> because it will get to you. And eventually it will get to you. And I never thought... I thought when in my 20s, animal sheltering is going to be my career. This is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do all my life. I thought that. And I was wrong. Because it gets to you. It might take a year. It might take five years. It might take 10 years. It might, for me, it took 20 years 
to get to that point, but it gets to you. After a while, you're like, I just can't do this anymore. I said that every day for almost a year before I ended the job. I said, I just can't do this anymore. I would tell my husband, I said, I can't do this anymore. And it's like kind of a blessing that he got this position, even though he is Mr. GM. <sighs> it's a blessing that he got this position because I literally would have gone insane. I literally, if I would have stayed there, you would have had to have checked me into a facility for insane people because something would, I, I would literally would have gone, gone insane. Thank you for listening, everyone. Hope you like this video. To all my old co-workers, I love you. I miss you. Call me anytime. Call me anytime. I miss you, Jackie. I miss you, Hannah. I miss you, Katie F. I miss you, Jill. I miss you, Regan. I miss you. I miss you, dispatchers. I miss you, animal control officers. I miss you, supervisors. I miss you, people. To all the people. I miss the people. I miss you, Ange. I miss you, other Ange. I miss you, other Ange. There was like three of them. I miss you, Danielle. I miss you, Amelia. I miss you, Donna. I miss everybody. I miss you, Amy. I miss you, Kate. I'm trying not to like leave people out. I just miss everyone, okay? I miss you all. So, and I will talk to you later. Clark Smith Adventures. Good night.